Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we find ourselves in a bunker on the planet Arcosa. The red mountains stand tall, the moons are shining bright, and it's been 13 days since the last raid. Rejoice! A ship is coming to the rescue, but only one lucky bunker can squeeze aboard the vessel. So you'll be developing your bunker, recruiting unique colonists, and trying to keep your population happy fed, rested, and breathing. Arcosa is for one to four players. It takes one to two hours to play. It's for ages 14 and up and published by Toon Hammer. Now it's on Kickstarter right now, so I'm gonna show you how the game works and I'll see you on the other side. This is a Kickstarter preview, so all the art and components you see here are not final, they're prototypes. So check the Kickstarter link in the description of this video to see all the final art and components. The game is played over three rounds, and each of these rounds you're gonna be going through six different phases. Points in this game is reputation, and that's tracked around the edge, and you're trying to have the best reputation at the end. Now everyone starts with their own bunker. There's an A and B side. You could do sort of a starting beginner game with the A side. You're gonna start with different resources and different rooms here. And over the course of the game, you're going to be building different rooms and powering those to give you some different benefits, but they're also gonna give you points at the end of the game, but you're gonna be building down from the top down because you're gonna be building down through your bunker. You're gonna be recruiting and putting colonists to work throughout the game, but they're also going to get you points and you'll be able to recruit more of these throughout the game as well. About a third of the way in, you'll be able to start gaining bribes, which if you're able to pay this at the end of the game, you'll also be getting points, but they're a little risky because if you can't pay these resources at the end of the game, you'll get minus three points. Now this is nitrogen, for example. Now each player also gets a starter leader. It sort of just talks about the different things that you could do, the different actions, but there are plenty of uh, you know, non-starter leaders that you could choose from in, on a B side once you know the game really well. And they have different types of things they can do, different starting resources, different sort of special trade actions and things like that. So even in the setup of this game, there's a lot of things you could do to quickly get started for your first game or customize it and make it, you know, a deeper uh, experience if you're familiar with the game with the, both the bunkers and the leaders. Now, each of those three rounds go through these six phases. First, you'll prepare the board for that round. There's different things you'll do depending on the round that it is. But then you're going to go to player actions. And each of the players will take two of these, and you'll continue doing this in turn order until everyone pretty much passes and is done with their action. So let's talk about the different actions you can do. The first one is put a colonist to work. Now on the left side of your board, you'll see this is a rested colonist because you'll play this card for one of the two actions and you have some different options depending on that colonist. Like, for example, here you get two food or here you can move up the morale track. Now moving up this morale track is very interesting because let's say we're the player that's playing the white color. If we were to move up one, we would move up one, but we would push any cubes that we ran into down below us. And this is important because in one of the phases towards the end of the round, you're going to gain or possibly lose reputation depending on where you are on this morale track. Now instead of you know gaining food or going up on the morale track, you could go out and explore. And they have sort of different little backpacks and you know gear that they can use. And you'd look at what that icon is. And there's different spots on the board that you can go explore depending on what that icon is. So I brought this card on the board just to show you how they sort of match like this. So I could maybe go to this spot, the crash site. Now the first thing we'd do is we'd look at this and we would move the exploration counter that many. Now here it starts right about here, depending on slightly randomly actually at the beginning of the game. So it's gonna go one, so it's gonna go one here. And because it landed on this, we're going to pull one of these event cards. Now there's different types. Uh, now we have so the green ones, those are the low risk events. Then we have you know, medium risk events and high risk events. So you would pull the card out and you'd do what it says. So you'd flip the card over and it would have some flavor text as to what's going on. But in the end, you'll get, in this case, we get something. Your explorer finds some extra supplies, gain one nitrogen and one food. So we'd gain those supplies. That'd actually be really good for us. Or maybe you have a choice. Stranger challenges your, your explorer over some salvage scrap and you choose. And do you want to barter for it and lose one food and gain two scrap? Or option B, fight for it, lose one reputation, then gain two scraps. So you'll have some choices sometimes as well. Or maybe you'll get a card that you might be able to use anytime. Like at any time, look at the top card of the deck and you discard that card. And as you can imagine, as you get through those decks, the different ones, like this one is the high risk. Most of the time it's gonna be pretty bad stuff. Like in this case, um, you would need to choose between injuring a colonist and losing morale. So usually some bad things that you'll be choosing from. 
Now remember, you're moving this up depending on where you went and what that number is. And some of the other things just give you certain resources, like, hey, this will allow you uh, to gain some scrap, for example. This one would actually allow you to roll uh, the resource die and get, you know, what comes there. Although some of the spots are raised and it's, it's, there's a little red around there on purpose because if you're going past this, you must actually stop at that raid. And these raids will typically target a specific person. Now, again, more flavor text about the, the Hordes raid event. Um, but in a, an example, this one says the player with the best room. So if in round one, if you have the vault room, you'd lose a morale and deactivate the power shard uh, on your best room. Otherwise, if it's round two or three, you'd lose one morale. So depending on when this happens, the one with the best room is going to get, you know, they're basically going to be raided. So after we have moved that and, and activated it, we would then pay a cost. And we'd pay these two costs from our, our resources. It shows a little red arrow going down there. That's what you're paying. And then you'd get this. In this case, we're going to get a power shard. And as we'll show you in just a moment, those will help power rooms for you. However, ex instead of exploring a spot that gives you resources, you might explore one that gets you a, a new colonist, like New Colony Network. Now here, let's say this one has this backpack, and I can come here, but this says I can pay one less of those. So here, I would still move that tracker one, as I showed you earlier. Normally, we'd have to pay one, but because I'm using this one to explore, I don't have to. I would actually gain this colonist that would get added right to my hand. And you'll see there's sort of like a little road here, so they all sort of slide down. And then this empty one up top would get filled in. Now, the, the beginning of the game, they're all A deck colonists. But as you move to the second round and such, the, the B level colonists are going to come out and they're going to be you know, more powerful. Now remember, during the action phase, you're getting two actions and it's going to be the next player's turn. But when it comes back to you, maybe you do something else. Like maybe you build a room. And here's the rooms that are, that are available. Now these have costs. They cost different resources. Some of them don't cost anything. And these will get you points at the end of the game, assuming they're still sort of the active room in that bunker spot. So we could literally get this one for free. And then later on, when the rooms produce, this is going to get me a morale, for example. And we've already talked about how morale can be sort of turned into points there a little bit. Uh, but maybe we get this one. We spend uh, these two resources here. It's mag tape and scrap. And when we do that, we can place it on a bunker and you have to work your way down, meaning you couldn't build down here from the rooms that are built. These are pre-built. I could put it, you know, say here or here. Now, if I put it here, this immediately gets me a scrap as I cover this up. Now, this room is not yet powered, but if I have a power shard and or if any time in the future I get one, I could place it on here because rooms that are powered at the end are going to give us some certain things, benefits that are on the bottom left. And even later on, when you build some of these rooms, like let's say we have that, when this room specifically powers towards the end, not only would you get the three food from here, but because it's a science type building by that icon up there, you'd also get a, you know, in another one. So you're trying to build certain ones sometimes in certain parts of your bunker. Now you'd only build one room for an action, but then you'd follow these. This would kind of go down like this, and then a new room would come out. And again, uh, starting in the second round, actually some B level rooms come out that are more powerful, similar to like how the colonists work. You could do some other things like spending two scrap to basically get rid of all these four and bring four new ones in from sort of the bag of rooms that you're using. Or maybe you're trading like a nitrogen for uh, or food for a scrap or a nitrogen and a food for uh, a mag tape or a nitrogen or a food to, to gain a uh, health card. Now these are Dr. Sawbones cards and they might do things like heal two colonists. Now I told you because once you're using the colonists up, they come here to sort of, they need to be, they're resting. But sometimes uh, some of your colonists might get injured and they go over here. When you heal one, they'll go from here to here because this is the side that you get back at the end of the, uh, end of the round. You get these back in your hand, but these ones you won't. You need to heal them first before that will be able to happen. You can also make a trade from this spot, and, but you would make it from here, not the supply. Like I could give a nitrogen and take a food or vice versa, but it has to be there in order to do that. And there'll be different amounts of these depending on the round. Like in round one, there's just one of each. In round two, there's two of each. In round three, there's three of each that start here for trading. Now, the last action you could possibly do, and this only starts starting in the second round, is taking one of these bribes. Now, a certain amount of these get put out at the beginning of the round, depending on the amount of players. I'm just showing you all the unique ones that I have in this prototype. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, you know, you'll take one of these, and if you're able to spend this at the end of the game, you'll get this many reputation, essentially points. But if not, it'll be minus. So it's sort of some long-term goals there, try to turn resources into points, if you will. Next, after everyone has done actions two at a time and everyone's gone clockwise as many times as they could or want to, once everyone's passed, you'll go on to the rations. And in this case, it's, it's optional. So now you can only have ever six colonists. So if you ever get more than six, you have to get rid of one and you know keep six. But here for rations, you're going to, for every pair of colonists you have, you're going to have to pay a food and a nitrogen or go down on that morale track. 
And we already talked about how this morale track works, getting a certain amount or losing a certain amount of reputation depending on where you are on that track. Now after you've done that, we'll go to the room production and then you're going to produce uh, from each room that is powered, meaning it has a shard. Now certain effects will, call, will cause a spot to be deactivated. Instead of actually gaining what this gives, you simply flip this over and activate it in the next round, assuming it's like this, you'll, you know, you'll be able to get uh, what it does. And so these give you like, for example, two nitrogen, two food, three food. Again, we get an extra food because it's, a, it's that type of building. Uh, and then we get, you know, one of those uh, uh, Dr. Saw both uh, cards and the nitrogen, for example. And again, if you're able to, you know, at the end of the game, you're going to be able to get a certain amount of points for some of these that you've built. Uh, and they don't even have to be powered at the end of the game. You just sort of have to have them. Now you can't actually overbuild because you are building the, your way down uh, as you build new ones, but you can build on top, but you lose the abilities and such of those there. And you'd also lose the points on the ones you covered as well. Then you'd rest colonists, meaning you'll take all the ones from your resting side and put them back in your hand. Then you'd start a new round. After the third round, whoever has the highest reputation is the winner. Now here's the backside of those starting leaders. Here's six of the ones to show you here. There's more than this, but this just gives you an idea of sort of the artwork in the game. Also how they all start with different resources, different morales, and they have a different special uh, trade action as well. For example, once per round on this one, you'd move your cube over and you could do this special trade action, which is basically turning in to food in order to get a power shard. And at the end of the round, it would sort of reset because you could do it once per round. Now, when using the B side, this is when you do your regular bunker setup, not this, uh, the starter setup. And you'll get to choose from a bunch of different special tiles, special room tiles, and you'd place that here as well. And these do all sorts of different things. Like this one is Space Pirate Radio. And there's a great player aid here that has all the special rooms. You can choose which one you want. In this case, you get to reduce each opponent's morale by one and then increase yours by one. And you can also see this has references about the different colonists' abilities as well. And speaking of B-side, here's B colonists, some of the special ones that come out a little bit later, like Combustible Joe. Look at, look at these powerful actions. Three morale, three food, three nitrogen. You can take one of those. But after doing one of those actions, you've got to roll a die. If you get one or two, not only do you go down in two morale, but you basically he's removed from the game because he explodes. Now, Peregrine Paramo, uh, they can actually assassinate an, a, a colonist in an opponent's bunker if they want to. Uh, that player would basically, you know, remove one of their chosen colonists from the game. Uh, so essentially, you know, allows you to assassinate. Now, Leroy here, he will roll this die three times and it'll basically... Uh, hurt another player's bunker, like they'd have to lose this resource, or maybe they have to injure one of their colonists or things like that. So this essentially does this three times. Now the audit allows you to take one other player's morale and put it down one, but and then you put yours up two, for example. So here's some of the more powerful uh, colonists. And that's pretty much the game, gaining that reputation by morale and numbers on colonists and bribes and rooms and things like that. Well, there you have our COSA, and as I showed in the overview, you'll be leading your bunker colony to salvation from an unforgiving alien planet. Now, if you'd like to see the final art and components and all the different pledge levels available, you can click the link below me right in the description of this video. Now, that's going to take you directly to the Kickstarter project page, and I'm sure that Toon Hammer would love your support.